through our Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Greetings coming to you from the Faith United Missionary Baptist Church, located Blue Hill Road South, where our senior pastor is the Reverend Dr. William Thompson. I'm Minister Lisa Knowles, and I welcome you to our Victory Celebration Service. How many of you know that being born of God is the source of victory? 1 John 5, 4-5 tells us, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Since believing on him is the key to being born of God, and the key to victory is faith, I welcome you this morning to come and experience this victory and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. The doors of Faith United are open to you. For those of you who require prayers and wants to experience this victory, you can call our church's office at 361-4855, where our ministers await your call. Or you can email your prayer request at fumbc at coralwave.com. To our wonderful viewers, I need you to perk up. Hit the like and share button. Let's get everyone on to join in this victory celebration. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him this morning. Let us join our service in progress. Don't forget now, share, like, and send some love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our hymn of praise this morning is he hideth my soul. Hallelujah.
What an amazing Savior. What an amazing God he is. You're all I need. You're all I need. Every breath you breathe through me. You're all I need. That your rivers flow through me. You're all I need. Every breath yeah, you breathe through me. Thank you, Lord.
Blessed Sunday morning. We come praising you. We come thanking you. We come lifting you up because you are so worthy of our praise. God, you've been so good, so mighty good to us. You brought us over many mountains. You brought us through many valleys. You brought us through this pandemic. So God, we come by this morning just to lift up our ever knees unto you to say, God, we love you. God, we praise you. God, we adore you. Because you are whatever you are. You are, I am that I am. You are the bright and morning star. You are our lily in the valley. Whatever we want you to be. Hallelujah. You are to us. So we come this morning with a heart full of thanksgiving. A heart full of praise. That you allow us to walk out of our home. Ah, uh, set clothes in our right minds. Just to worship you today. Just to magnify you today. Just to praise you today. God, you've been so good. You brought us to the end of another month. God, so we are grateful. We are thankful. Ah, oh, God, you've been so good to us. Not because of the good that we have done, but because of your grace and your mercy, you kept us. So we come giving you thanks. Thank you for this worship experience. Thank you for our senior pastor who will speak to us today from the oracles of heaven. Take him, Father God, up to Mount Arab right now. Wash him. Wash him. Wash him, rub him, high up, clean him up. So when he come down to this pulpit, he will come with a word from you today. Bless him, Father God. Strengthen him on every side. As he advance in age, advance him in grace. That he will not get weary in well-doing. We pray for his wife, Betty. God, thank you for your presence with us this morning. Thank you for bringing her back, Father God. Still in her right mind. Still serving you. Still lifting you up. Still magnifying you. Cover her, we pray. Cover all the leaders of this fellowship. All the members. And even those who are visiting with us today. Those in radio and TV land. Cover them, Father God. Oh God, we present the whole church to you right now. Just have your way as we continue to worship you and to magnify you because you are i am that i am cover us now bless the service bless those who will participate that this will be a service unto you today in jesus name we pray amen and amen what a friend we have in jesus
We should never be discouraged. Just take it to the Lord in prayer. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Oh, can we find a friend? Somebody give God a praise offering right there. Hallelujah. Please stand now as we have our scripture reading by Sister Diane Williams. Please, everyone stand with the Bibles in your hands. Amen. Good morning, church. The scripture resting is taken from Psalms chapter 125. When you have it, please say amen. Amen. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion which cannot be removed, Hallelujah. but abided forever. Amen. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord is around about his people, and henceforth even forevermore. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the Lord of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. Amen. Do good, O Lord, yes, unto yes. those that be good, Amen. And to them that are upright in their hearts. Yes, sir. As for such as turn aside unto their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them forth yes, with sir. the workers of iniquity. But peace shall be upon Israel. Amen. The word of the Lord is already blessed. Amen. Amen.
when I tread the words of Jordan did my anxious fears subside. Hear me through the swelling current land me safe on Kenyan side. Songs of praises. Songs of praises. I will ever give to thee. God, my Father, we thank you for this preaching moment. Thank you, God, for your keeping power. Thank you, God, for your anointing power. Thank you, God, for blessing us so marvelously that we may be able to share in this day of worship. Thank you, God, for healing sick bodies. Thank you, God, for deliverance. Thank you, God, for setting souls free. Now, God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of the people's heart be acceptable in thy sight. Amen. Thank God for this wonderful expression of his love. He has brought us again to where we can collectively lift his name in prayer, in songs, in the preach word, and in worship. What a mighty God we serve. What a gracious God we serve. What a right now God we serve. What an on time God we serve. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. We want to thank Diane for reading our scripture this morning. We invite your attention now to the book of Judges. Judges chapter 4. Judges chapter 4. And I will be reading from verse number 4. Judges chapter 4. Verse number four. Now Deborah, the wife of Lepidoth, was a prophet, and she was serving as a judge in Israel at that time. She would sit under a certain palm tree between Ramoth and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the people of Israel would go there for her decision. One day she sent for Barak, son of Ammonon, from the city of Kadesh and in Nepali, and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, has given you this command. Take 10,000 men from the tribes of Nepali and Zebulun and lead them to Mount Tabor, and I will bring Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army to fight you at the Kishon River. He will have a, his chariots and soldiers, but I will give you the victory over him. I want to speak this morning from the subject, the God who specializes in the unexpected. The God who specializes in the unexpected. 
My beloved family and friends, let me begin by saying to us that the count of God's interaction with humankind is one story after another of God's doing the unexpected among us. Time and time again, God has showed his people that he does not think and he does not work the way we think and the way we work. He does the unexpected. He moves in ways that draws his people into the fullness of his grace. The story of Deborah is a fantastic illustration of how God does the unexpected. It's a classic story about how God in purposeful will can do for people and systems and nature the things that only he can accomplish through his purpose. And this, my family, is evidence in our text today. Here we see a call to leadership that was truly unexpected and unheard of in that Middle Eastern society. God is calling a woman to lead Israel. When Deborah was assigned to the leadership, the judgeship of Israel, God had broken down and torn down the cultural wards of sexual discrimination and systemic prejudice against women. God break down those walls long time ago. First of all, Deborah was called to the leadership of Israel at a time when women had few rights, if any at all. She was called during a period when the rulers, warriors, and decision makers of the world were all men. But God called her. God called her and set up. This was unexpected, my family. As a judge, she held court, and the Israelites from all over the country came to her so she could settle disputes in the same fashion as the children of Israel had sought Moses when they were in the desert wilderness. But Deborah was far more than a judge. She was also a prophet. Remember now, most of the other Old Testament judges were not prophets. They were warriors. And when God spoke to them, he spoke to them through angels. But when it came to Deborah, because she was also an assigned prophet of God, God delivered his message directly to her as he does with all prophets. Watch this now. Deborah was an unusual and exceptional leader. She led at a time when women normally weren't able to rise up. But God raised her up in spite of. And by doing so, he gave evidence that he was good and able to use people whom others might discount or dismiss. I'll get an amen just about there. Notice, if you will, that it was after the Israelites had experienced 20 plus years of oppression at the hands of the Canaanites that God called Deborah to leadership. The call came while she was praying. My family, there's something about prayer. God does some unusual and unexpected things when you pray. She was praying for deliverance for her people who were being mistreated and oppressed by the hands of the Canaanites. She received a message from God that he had heard the people's prayer for their deliverance. And he was now ready to help them and 
to deliver them out of the hands of their oppressors. My family, there is nothing prayer cannot do. I don't care how big the pandemic may be. I come by to tell you when you get down on your knees before God with a contrite heart and a contrite spirit, he will move it away. So God was very specific in how he would deliver them. He told Deborah that he wanted her to call Barak. Here it is, he said, now go call Barak, a man who was a proven soldier, a proven warrior, a man who had been a part of Israel's campaigns against invaded forces for years. I want you, Deborah, to go call him and let him know I want him to set up the army. So she told Barak to prepare 10,000 men for war and to command the forces of Israel's army to do battle against the Canaanite army. Remember now, during this time of the assignment to Barak, the Canaanite army were commanded and led by Sisera, the most decorated and ruthless soldier of the day. The record is that Sisera and the Canaanite army were well armed. They, had, they were well equipped. They had all the tools for war. And on top of that, they had some over 900 chariots. And the Bible said they were iron chariots. These chariots were the equivalent of the tanks that the armies of the day use when they go to battle. These tank-like chariots were to be used against this poorly untrained foot soldiers of Israel's army. Remember now, at the time, Israel's expectation of themselves was very low. They had been abused and oppressed by the Canaanites for a generation and had done nothing to free themselves. But God had a different expectation for them. God was about to deliver them out of the hands of their captors and return them to their homeland and give it back to them. Isn't that just like God? He carries out his plan for our lives in spite of us. If God prayed for us to get ready, some of the things he does in our lives would never happen. But praise his holy name. He carries out his plan of our lives in spite of us. Some of us are still too fearful. Some of us are still covering and running and hiding when God is waking this thing out. Hallelujah. He is the same God that he was for Barak. He is the same God for Faith United. We got to trust God. We have to believe God. God is in the midst of everything. Paul said, whatever I find myself in, I'm going to trust God. Remember, uh, uh, Rock was told of his assignment to lead Israel in the battle against the powerful General Sisera and the Canaanites. He was not excited. Because he knew Israel was ill-equipped to stand against the juggernaut armies of the Canaanites. But after consultation with Deborah, he was willing to carry out his assignment. Oh, I don't know what Deborah would have told him. But I know she asked him to trust God and to believe God. I don't know. Uh, what would cause him to change his mind but after he talked with Deborah the Bible says he was excited to go to battle Deborah told him that she had a little talk with Jesus and Jesus had promised her that everything would be alright and my sisters and my brothers, whenever the storm clouds of life 
have a law around you. Just have a little talk with Jesus. He has a way of making everything all right. Now, Brother Cartwright, Barack says, uh, I will go. But I need you to come go with me. You, you, you are so strong. You have such firm belief in this God. I need you to go with me. Maybe he believed she could win, he, he could win without um, any problem when she was present. After all, she was the one to whom God had spoke. Huh? God spoke to her. So Barack said, come on. You can go with me. So maybe he thought she needed to watch the battle. The way Moses watched and prayed as Joshua fought the Amalekites. Maybe on the other hand, Brother Patrick, he wanted her to die alongside him. If their forces were defeated. Scripture records does not say why he wanted her to go, but she agreed to go. I want you to buckle up and hear this now. Here is a woman. Here is a woman. Never before have a woman been to the front line of battle. But she said, all right, I'll go with you. But let me warn you before you go. If I go, you will not get the credit for the victory. Because the Lord will hand Syria over to a woman. She said, well, what did I go? But if you want some bragging rights, you will lose it. Because God, if I go, God is going to turn the Syria in the hand of a woman. Can I tell you that God has a record of intervening in unexpected and unusual ways to deliver his people? The author Warren W. Y. said, if you can explain what God is doing in your ministry, what God is doing in your life, then God is not really in it. Oh man, I need to say that again. If you can explain everything God is doing for the good of your life, then God is not in it. There's some things God does you just can't explain. Jeremiah says like fire. Anytime you could tell someone, sit down, let me tell you what, has happened, what I've done. No, God is not in it. There are some things your bill is due. Your mortgage is backed up. And you check the bank account. And there's nothing there. You call your friends. And they give you a sad story. But by and by, when it's time for that bill to be paid, somehow, somewhere, God showed up. God does the unexpected. There are some things God does in the ministry of the church and in our personal life that we at our best effort just can't explain. Hallelujah. But thank God we enjoy the benefits. Just look what the Lord has done. Early this morning. Oh, glory be to God. He woke you up. What a blessing. What a joy. You can do it by yourself. Hmm. Y'all 
I'll sit down. I got a little bit to go here. God wants us to wait and depend on him. He delights in showing his creativity. Matter of fact, scripture is filled with stories of unusual and unexpected ways that God defeated enemies on behalf of his people. What is more unexpected than Joshua telling the people, line up, we can march around this wall. Huh? Don't talk too much. Just march. And the wall is coming down. Number one, those who did not, who don't fully save, you know, everybody is saved. They say, Mr. Joshua, sir, we heard you. But have you noticed that that wall is so thick that two chariots can pass on the wall? And you tell us, walk around it, and it's coming down? I tell you, God does some unexpected things. Joshua say, follow me. For six days, they march around the wall one time. Then on the seventh day, Joshua woke them up early in the morning. He said, the day is reckoning day. The day is deliverance day. Today is set free day. Get up. Eat a good breakfast because your next meal will be in Jericho. What a mighty God we serve. The Bible says, I tell you, Brother Codrick, God does things in unexpected ways. The Bible says, after they had early in the morning, Joshua lined up until now today, we can walk around seven times. Now we don't. One today was a practice run. Today is a real thing. We're going to walk around seven times. And on the seventh time, we're going to march into Jericho. The Bible says they march around quiet. But when they go to the last lap, Joshua said, all the musicians come to the front. Bring your musical instrument. Bring your horn, bring your cymbal, bring your drum, bring your keyboard, bring your organ, bring your piano. We go to the front and we can celebrate. So on the seventh time, on the seventh time, when they start marching, Jerry, Joshua said, well, it's time to make some noise. And every now and again, the church need to make some noise. The enemy need to know we're here. Every now and again, there need to be a shout in the church so the enemy can know that God is still here. Every now and then, someone needs to cry aloud in the church. The Bible says that the horn blew, the people shout, and the walls came tumbling down. God does unexpected things. Then, for the prophet Elijah, he said, go up on the mountain. I want you to have a confrontation with Ahab. Elijah goes on the mountain. And uh, Ahab and him had the confrontation. Then God said, Elijah, I'm going to do this differently. I'm going to do it unexpected. Because... If you light that wood, you put fire that wood, they can say, maybe you had some branch under it. Uh, but I'm going to do it different. I want you to get some water. Wet the wood up. Wet the wood up. And I don't want you to light it. When you don't wet it up, you go on the side and get your prayer mood. And as you pray, I will send fire from heaven and light it. And that's what God is saying to us today. When you have your problems in life, 
You just fit the altar. You set the altar and you back off and watch God work. What he heal sick bodies? What he pay mortgages? What he bring wandering children back home? He is able to tell you. All you have to do is trust him and never doubt. He will do it. We should never ask or expect God to dumb down his extraordinary plans to fit into our tiny minds. And that's what we try to do. I we only can see it as big as we can see it. That we ask him, God, when you ask God for something that be bigger than you can do it, if you can do it, why ask God for it? The Bible says you pray, but you pray amiss. Ah, you ask God for a job, but you won't go out to look for none. Ah, you have to go out and seek it and let God provide it. We can't put God in our tiny mindset. He is too big for your mindset. Oh, why should we expect God to be restricted to our unlimited, our limited understanding? We only could go so far, but God is, is all that. Trust him. Watch this. Whatever you trust God in situations that look impossible, and you appear to be in a losing battle of those who don't have Christ-like faith, God will turn things around for you and give you the victory in front of them. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Man, you better, better hear that. Lord, Lord, prepares my table in the midst of my... Watch this now. Huh? Not only did I sit down and eat, huh? but God prepared in such a way that even those who try to kill me, those who talk about me, those who don't like me, those who wish me dead, they can come and eat. And that's the God we serve. Bigger than big. Hallelujah. To the enemy, your victory will be unexpected. But to the child of God, who finally believe in God and obey him, the victory is expected. Once you pray and never doubt, you may say, well, Rev, I have this problem, I have that problem, but let me give you the antidote for it. The antidote is praying and believing in faith, and God will bring it out. Watch this. When Sisera, the esteemed commander of the Canaanite army, saw that his well-trained army was losing the battle against Deborah, and Israel, Israel right tied to him. Remember, I said how great this Cicero was. He was the most, I mean, the most ruthless soldier of his day. But when he saw that his army was being defeated by that little ragtag army of Israel, he had to spark up. How could this happen? But what he failed to understand in the midst of Israel's army was a God who had never yet lost a battle. Huh? So when Caesarea saw that the Bible says he abandoned the army and ran away for his life, this big soldier, this prepared soldier, this man who the talk in the town when you talk about military experts, when he saw his army losing, he ran for his life. And God will set the devil a running from you when you trust him and never doubt. So he ran to a tent that was on the outskirts of the Kidron River that he had some friends living there. And he ran there to hide. And I wanted to read the story, the sweet story. The woman, J, J, JL, she took him in. She fed him, and then she bared him down. Hill it. You have to watch 
Men and women are too nice. You have to watch. You have to keep an eye on them. She fed him. She bed him down. Tell him have a good night's sleep. The Bible says as soon as he fell asleep and he began to snore she got a hammer and got a nail that used to nail the tents down, the long nail and while he was sleeping she put the nail to the temple and drove it through his head this tells me my family that God will use unexpected persons to make the victory complete. Don't count no one out. He went to bed feeling good. Them fellas are dead now. I am safe. But God, the victory had to be complete with him. Deborah is a tremendous example of a leader who had influence not only in the spiritual life of Israel, but she also had influence in the community, the government, and the military. Watch this. Watch this. When she agreed to accompany Barak into battle, no one in Israel had never seen a thing like this. A woman in the war room. Huh? Planning strategies for war. Could I tell you, my family, that God wants to use unexpected people like you and me. He wants men and women who are willing to stand up against the odds. Men and women who are resolved about fulfilling their Christ ordained assignments. That's what we all ought to know and know that that's all that is matter. You see, only God's view of our potential matters. People will tell you, you can't do this. And some of you in here have been told that. But only God knows your potential. Huh? Now, the bad thing is, when you sit on potential that God has given you, just because someone said you can't do it, huh? you have to use your potential. Hear this. You don't have to live under people's limitations when you serve a God who is limitless. Why are you worrying about who what people think? Deborah was not concerned about what they were whispering. She was an assignment from God. Could I tell you that you and I are bigger than the way the world sees us? Hmm? There is more to you than what they see. No matter how others view you, God can use you. Man, that's, that's a good piece of writing. No matter how people view you, God can use you. And the thing is, he's waiting and ready to give you a chance to make a difference. You are ready on his list of recipients for the unexpected. Hallelujah. You are ready on God's list. For, the, for being used as unexpected. Hallelujah. God wants to pride the world for you. Yes, you. God wants to pride the world for you. You are on the list to do great things for God. But you cannot be God's servant and do what he asks only when you feel like doing it or when you feel safe to do it. The truth is serving God is not always safe. I need to say that slowly. Some of us want to do God's will. We want to do it when we're ready. No one will tell me how to do it. No one will tell me when to do it. I'm going to do it when I'm good and ready. Huh? God can't use you. Your attitude is wrong. Huh? Huh? When God has gifted you, you're supposed to push your gift to the front. I don't care what they're whispering. Huh? And people will whisper. But you have to push the gift God gives you to the front. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. True this. Serving God is not safe. And sometimes you have to push away where people can talk bad about you. People can cuss you, call you everything but a child of God. But you know you're on assignment. You're on assignment 
for God. But the assurance is, as I close, while there may not always be safety in standing up and speaking up for God, there is always security in God. Now someone should show right there. You may not always be safe and popular, but one thing you know, God will take care of you. Watch this now. It was not Deborah's responsibility to go to battle. The Simon was given to Barak. But she knew as a leader, she had to motivate her people. Yes, Wake up leaders. Yes, sir. When those who are leaders are not willing to step out front, then we let our people down. They cannot follow where you do not lead them. Boy, I preach in this thing this morning. Huh? Leaders must step out when your people are dependent on you. Your courage is their courage. Your victory is their victory. You can't be humdrum and be a leader. Nothing is more limiting than the self-imposed boundaries that we put around people. We clamp, put clamps around their lives. When we require God to fit in their in His expectation, when you clamp people down, God want them to come out. Leaders should always be pointing their people out. Deborah certainly did not do that. She was open to what God wanted her to do. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? Can I tell you that whenever God asks us to do something for Him, it's a privilege. Come on, let me say that again. Whenever God asks you to do something for him, it's a privilege. He could have asked anyone else, but he chose you. You were here complaining, always face made up, always have something else to do. When God assigned you to do something, that's a privilege. We have to understand that this life we live, it's only for a short time. But when you leave these mundane chores, you live eternity for God. So if he gives you something to do, that should not take second place. Some people only come to church when there's nothing else in the way to do. Huh? But God's invitation is, a, is not an obligation. You don't have to do it. But you ought to make it an obligation. Because God says, I'm going to do it. Hear this. If we allow fear to stop us from doing God's will, if we allow reason and systems to cause us to lose faith in his promises, we are in trouble. The Bible is replete on God dealing with men and women of faith. And here in this story today, a woman of faith led Israel. My God, wake up, hear me, family. God will keep you if you have faith. He surrounds you if you have faith. You have to stop allowing reason to overshadow your faith. My God, let God be faced all the time. Mm. If we allow the enemy of the cross to dictate our path, then we are like most men, most miserable. Hmm? And the blessing of God will never go to you will go to someone else. Can I tell you that sometimes God will surprise you in the way he works in your life. The record is replete with persons whom God has surprised and done unexpected in the scripture. Who was surprised by the way God worked? The first one was Noah. No surprise. Man, God told him he could save him and his family while destroying the earth and with flood. The first thing, no one ever heard about no flood before. That's number one. The second thing, a boat, what is a boat? Now we ain't got nothing for no boat, no sea for no boat. But God told him to build. And so Noah respected what God said. And he built the ark. 
And as God said, the rain came. And only those who had faith enough to go in the ark were saved. Second, Abraham was surprised when God said he would make him the father of a nation. When the old man over 100 years old, and God said, you will be the father of the nation. God, Abraham said, God, sir, have you forgotten I don't have any children? God said, no, I'm going to give you one. <laughs> huh? I 100, my wife 90. Something wrong with that. Huh? I got to go check see who that young fella is. Can you hear me? Huh? Huh? But what God did, God blessed him and made him the father of the nations of the world. That's what God will do. Unexpected him. Then Joseph, you all remember him, do you? Huh? His brothers were surprised. When they, when their brother who they had sold to slavery, who went down to Egypt and was lied on, put in prison, but end up being the prime minister. Huh? That's what God will do. Moses was surprised when God chose him. He was a wanted man. They had wanted posters out of Moses all over the Middle East. He killed and ran away and not only that, he robbed the, 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 the palace uh, by acting as he was the son of Pharaoh. So when God told him to go back there, and delivered people. He was surprised, but God does the unexpected. Then Samuel was surprised. Then God told him that David, a mere shepherd boy, would be the next king of Israel. David? You mean Jesse's boy? Huh? You, you, you don't mean that fellow up there blowing on flute all day? Eh? Huh? But when God is ready, he does the unexpected things in life. David became the greatest king Israel had ever known. He had to go through some rough roads, but he became king. David was surprised. Remember the little slingshot and the couple stone. God gave him Goliath's head. That was a surprise, but God does the unexpected. Naaman, you all remember him. He was surprised when he told him to go dip in the muddy, dirty Jordan. But God healed him. Mary was surprised when the angel Gabriel went to her and told her she was chosen of God to be the mother of the Savior of the world. Me? Are you sure? But she became the mother of Jesus. Finally, Mary Magdalene and the other women who went out to the tomb with palms in their hand, the foot embalmed the body of Jesus Christ. When they got there, they saw the stone removed from the tomb. But their biggest surprise was when Jesus spoke to them. They knew he was dead. They saw them kill him. They saw them take him down from the cross and put him in the grave. But now he's saying, have no fear. Huh? They were surprised but unexpected. That's why my family, we serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. Huh? Huh? No matter what men say, we serve a risen Savior in the world today. The same Savior who will give Deborah the power and give Deborah the faith to do what you've done will do it for you. I want everyone here to look at me today. I want you to believe what Deborah did. God have an assignment for you. You can do the same thing. God has an assignment for you. If you allow fear to stop you, then the blessing will have to go to someone else. I want you to hear me this morning. If you allow fear to get in the way, the blessing God has for you will go to someone else. Just suppose that Deborah say, God, 
I'm a woman. I can't save this man's world. Why are you asking me? All them soldiers over there, you asking me. God always use the unexpected to get his work done. And I want to declare and decree to you today that you are on the unexpected list. Hallelujah. You are on the unexpected list. God is about to do some things with and in your life. While all heads are bowed, eyes are closed, I want you to take a minute like Deborah did many, many years ago. And whatever the bondage is in your life, whatever the Canaanites of the day are doing to you, oppressing, misuse and abusing, this your time for release. Like Deborah of old, pray to God and ask him to release and return you to that which he has for you. Even though the Canaanites may occupy now, God is asking, Deborah is saying, and you are saying, return it back to me. God our Father, for every prayer that's whispered today, we ask you in the name of Jesus, hear them. Meet them at the point of need. Make deliverance possible. Set free some persons who are bound today. Thank you, God. We honor you for what you do even now. You get the glory. You get the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give God a hand of praise and let us stand. You heard the message that went forth today. God is in the deliverance business. He is in the healing business. He is in the set free business. Those of you who listen by way of telephones, by way of radio, by way of television, we want you to make a point of contact with your phone, the radio, or the television, because we're going to open the door of the church right now, and we want you to be a part of this move of God that God is about to do amongst us right now. Trust him. Whatever has been the Canaanite of your life, we ask you to trust God, that you will have the spirit and the faith of a Deborah, to cancel out, defeat the enemies that surround you. We open the door of the church. If you're here today in the building, you may come if you've not given your life to Christ. You may come if you need more faith for the journey. You may come if you've not yet been baptized or if you've not yet joined the fellowship of the church. Would you come? God bless you. God bless you. Is there another? Is there another? We wait for two more to come. That's one. We wait for one more to come. We wait for one more to come. God wait for you. That's what. Thank you, thank you. Well, what about overflow? Is there another? Would you come? What about overflow? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Is there another? Would you come and join these who come? Dashes will give you social distancing. Oh, praise his name. The choir is going to sing now. How they sing. If there another, would you come before we pray?
Father, we thank you for these who stand in the front of the altar. We thank you for those around the world who have a hand of contact. God, they are saying, please, Jesus, take our lives, consecrate them to you. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Every unsaved person on this line, every unsaved person listening on this hour, we ask you in the name of Jesus to please save their souls. Make them Father God over again. Let them understand that you are God who loves, you're God who cares. Let them come to know you in the pardon of their sins and their conditions. Let them leave from this place today with the fullness of joy that you've heard and saved their souls. Thank you now. Those who are sick and come seeking help, oh God, heal their bodies. You're known to be a doctor that walks around with healing in the hem of your garment. So heal and super heal in the name of Jesus. Have your way. We thank you now, God. We bless you now, God. Everyone, everyone who desire your healing, desire your salvation, desire your comfort, desire you in their life, we present them to you now. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Oh, have a holy bed where the saints of us The joy, the peace, the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with all of us that we meet in this place again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.